This LOS is Calculate and Interpret Financial Ratios Used in Credit Analysis. Okay, so we'll just recall from the accounting some of the common ratios used in financial analysis. It's always go, good to go back and do a bit of a review. So the main categories are activity ratios, liquidity ratios, solvency ratios, profitability ratios, and valuation ratios. And in this reading, we're talking about which ratios would be used in credit analysis. So if we're looking at credit analysis and debt and the ability to service debt, we'd be sometimes looking at liquidity ratios, which is the ability to meet short-term liabilities, the current ratio, quick ratio, cash ratio. But more importantly, we'd be looking here at the solvency ratios, which is the ability to meet the long-term obligations. So we'd be looking at the total debt, the debt to capital, the debt to equity, the financial leverage, and then we would get into the coverage ratios, the interest coverage and the fixed charge coverage ratios. Okay, so we're gonna look at more detail in terms of the ratios. So here's the leverage ratio and here's the, some coverage ratios. And we've got the numerator and we've got the denominator. It's always important to get your numerator and denominators right. And so we're gonna look at uh, debt to assets ratio, debt to capital ratio, debt to equity ratio, and the financial leverage ratio. Down here, the coverage ratios, we're gonna look at the interest coverage ratio and the fixed charge coverage ratio, okay? And uh, so here, for the debt to assets, the numerator is total debt, denominator is total assets. And debt is defined as the sum of interest-bearing short-term and long-term debt, okay? So when it's debt to assets, debt to capital, debt to equity, it's pretty easy, the numerator is debt. Debt to capital is going to be uh, debt, uh, total debt in the numerator, the denominator is total debt, plus the total shareholder's equity. Debt to equity is easy, it's just total debt divided by total shareholder equity. And then the financial leverage ratio, this should be familiar to you from the DuPont, that's average total assets over average shareholder equity. Remember the DuPont, the extended DuPont, return on equity equals net income over sales times uh, sales over assets times assets over equity, okay? And that was our uh, leverage. That was our leverage multiplier. This was our turnover, and this was our profitability. So you should be familiar with the financial leverage ratio. That was just a quick review. Goes back to the DuPont and the extended version for the RO, uh, uh, ROE. So I crossed out the sales here, and I crossed out the assets. I'm back to my net income over equity, which is return on equity, okay? Moving on to the interest coverage ratio, that's always an easy one because if we think of our income statement, we've got earnings before interest and tax, that's the numerator, EBIT, and what's the denominator? It's interest, it's the next line, okay? And our fixed charge coverage ratio is easy. We're just adding the lease payments to the numerator and the denominator to our interest coverage ratio, okay? So continuing with our traditional credit analysis, looking at corporate debt securities, some of the profitability and cash flow measures that we look at. As we said, we're looking at the earnings before interest and taxes, depreciation and amortization. Sometimes we're looking at EBITDA. We also look at funds from operations, FFO, uh, free cash flow before dividends. That gives us some indication again of, on uh, how we can service the debt. And we're gonna look also at uh, free cash flow after dividends, okay? And again, some of the leverage ratios, this is just a quick review. Uh, debt to capital we saw, debt to EBITDA is, a, is per perhaps a new one uh, that can be looked at, free cash flow, uh, free funds from operations divided by debt, and free cash flow to the firm after dividends divided by debt, okay? So these are some of the more specific leverage ratios that you may look at in a traditional credit analysis when looking at corporate debt securities and looking at some coverage ratios when we're doing traditional credit analysis, looking at corporate debt securities. We may look at uh, EBIT over interest expense. We saw that one, but we also may look at EBITDA over interest expense, okay? And some of the comments on issuer's liquidity, we may make some comments on the liquidity. We might look at the net working capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities for working capital, operating cash flows, uh, some of the committed bank lines, and uh, we also gonna look at the debt coming due and committed capital expenditures in the next one to two years. Now the debt coming due, that's usually in the notes to the financial statements. 
They have to have a schedule of what the outstanding debt is, uh, interest rates, when it's coming due. Committed capital expenditures, that might be a little bit harder to find in the notes, uh, especially things can uh, crop up. So, uh, you know, making some forecasts on the committed capital expenditures in the next two years is, would be more difficult than uh, finding in the notes to the financial statements the debt coming due. So this LOS is to calculate, so let's do a practice question to practice. The following information is from the annual report of Adidas for December 2010. We've got depreciation, amortization, 249 million euros. Total assets, uh, 10,618 million euros. Total debt, 1,613 million euros. And shareholders equity, 4,616 million euros. So the question is, the debt to capital ratio of Adidas is closest to A, 15.19%, B, 25.9%, or C, 34.94%. This question should not be too difficult. It's asking for the debt to capital ratio, okay? So we know the debt to capital ratio, the numerator is the total debt. They've given it to us here. There's no calculations that we need to do. And for the denominator, it's the total debt plus the total shareholders equity, and they've given us the shareholders equity. So we have our numerator, 1613, and for our denominator, the total capital is gonna be the total debt, plus the shareholders equity equals 6229. So the total, the uh, debt to capital ratio, 1613 divided by 6229, and that's gonna give us 25.9%. The correct answer is B, okay? So if you're good, a ratio is just one number divided by another. If you got your numerator and denominator, I would say that this is a pretty easy question. You'd be happy to see this one on the CFA exam. Okay, we're gonna finish this LOS with two more practice questions and these are good ones, okay? So you can see they're giving us a table here. There's three companies, company A, company B, and company C. I'm not gonna read all the numbers, but the columns, they're giving us the EBITDA margin. They're giving us return on capital. They're giving us an EBIT over interest expense, an EBITDA over interest expense, a debt to EBITDA, and a debt to capital. So it says here, based on only the leverage ratios, the company with the highest credit risk is A, company A, B, company B, or C, company C. Again, this question should not be too difficult if you're up to speed on your ratios. So this was asking based only on the leverage ratios. So you need to know the leverage ratios is debt to capital, debt to EBITDA, or it could be free funds from operations to debt or the free cash flow um, to the firm after dividends to debt. Nevertheless, you can see they've given us the debt to capital and they've given us the debt to EBITDA. So these are the two columns that we want to be looking at and it's saying the company with the highest credit risk. Now you've got debt in the numerator, so the bigger the number, that's the more debt you're going to have, which is going to be more financial risk. So you can see that company C has got the greatest debt over EBITDA uh, and also the highest debt divided by capital. Okay. Uh, in terms of percentages. So C is correct. The debt to capital and debt to EBITDA ratios are used to assess a company's leverage. Higher leverage ratios indicate more leverage and thus higher credit risk. Company C's debt to capital 46.3% and debt to EBITDA 2.5 times leverage ratio are higher than those for companies A and B. And one last practice question to finish this LOS. Again, it's giving us the exact same table, three companies, company A, company B, company C. We've got the columns for EBITDA margin, return on capital, EBIT over interest expense, EBITDA over interest expense, debt to EBITDA, and debt to capital. So this question, though, is based only on the coverage ratios. The company with the highest credit risk is A, company A, B, company B, or C, company C. Okay, these last two uh, practice questions have been a good review of the leverage ratios. Recall the leverage ratios, debt to EBITDA, debt to capital. The higher number means more debt, so that's more financial risk. So the last question is company C had the more financial risk, okay? Now this one, we're looking based only on the coverage ratios, which company has the highest credit quality, okay? So what we're gonna look at in terms of the coverage ratios, we have to remember that it's EBITDA over interest expense and EBIT over interest expense, those are the coverage ratios. 
and we're looking for the highest, you have got EBIT, which is earnings over expense. So again, we're looking for the highest number in terms of quality. It would be the lowest number in, in terms of the most risk. So again, you could see here that company C would still have the most risk, but it's company B that has the um, highest number, so it's got the highest uh, credit quality. So B is correct, okay? So the EBITDA over interest expense and EBIT over interest expense are the coverage ratios. Coverage ratios measure an issuer's ability to meet its interest payments. A higher ratio indicates better quality. Companies B's EBITDA uh, interest expense and EBIT over interest are higher than those for companies A and C. Okay, so a nice little review on the ratios, a couple of calculations, and um, a couple of tables to sort through. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.